The Blair Witch Project is often seen by and regarded as the first found footage horror movie, and, depending on which side of the aisle you stand, is able to help usher in found footage horrors for years to come. And while the Blair Witch Project certainly helped with revolutionizing found footage, it certainly wasn't the first, as 10 years before, in 1989, we got the McPherson tape. Now, there's a strong chance you've never heard of this movie, and you'll be right, this movie certainly has a wild history to it, not only production-wise, but also from when I first found out about this movie. But we'll say that after I give my thoughts on the movie itself. The movie itself is about a family having a birthday party in the woods and soon encountering aliens, and it's them trying to escape. A pretty simple plot, but honestly pretty safe when you're trying a new genre of filmmaking. What I do like about the movie is just how fun on the wall it feels. For being the first found footage movie, it already does a good job establishing why it's being filmed as is, and doesn't feel like they need a gimmick to do it. It feels like something new and something that we're not supposed to see, which by all means is the goal of a found footage movie. And that really helps when you see how the characters act in this movie. You generally feel the uncomfortableness in various moments that the characters are arguing with each other, to moments of fear and suspense when they have no idea what's going on, to moments where you feel sorry and helpless when they feel sorry and helpless. For a cast of characters that are relatively unknown, it's really impressive to see them get lost in their roles and come off as genuine enough where you feel enthralled by the experience they're going through. As for special effects, I'm honestly impressed with how much they ever got away with for essentially a no-budget movie. The movie only had $6,500 of budget to its name, but it's really impressive to see what they're able to accomplish, from the spaceship to the effects or the alien costumes. The movie doesn't really feel hindered by the low budget, but creates its own identity as a result of what they're forced to work with. The only criticism I have for this movie though, is kind of a common criticism that you can still see in found footage movies today, and that's the pacing. At points here, it's too slow. The movie's only 62 minutes long, but it sometimes felt like it's double that. And that's because of slow scenes that are meant to act as slow burns to the more energetic scenes when the aliens start showing up. I wouldn't have minded if they cut some of the parts of the slow burn scenes so that you still have the impact at once, but it takes half the time so you don't lose any interest. But aside from that, the McPherson tape is an entertaining movie that really accomplishes so much for being a low budget movie in a genre that at the time wasn't being done before. I'm confident that if this movie came out before The Blair Witch, it would have been a big hit for how different and creative it was for the time, and be seen as the official first found footage movie. But sadly, that didn't happen. And this will get into the backstory of the movie. Originally this movie was supposed to come out in 1989, but before having that wide release, a suspicious warehouse fire took place that would destroy all the assets needed for that wide release. So, the planned wide release was scrapped, and the movie only lived on in bootleg form so that would find its way to UFO hunters, government officials, TV shows, and eventually onto the early internet, including early YouTube, where I would eventually find it, and be convinced that it was a real alien abduction tape. This was because of the poor quality, little information about the movie, and the fact that during the time any sort of upload of this would be on the site, it would be removed with no info as to why it was removed. So, this helped paint the picture that this was a real alien abduction tape in my mind. And funnily enough, I wasn't the only one who thought that. There were plenty of other people who thought the same, which kind of helped this movie develop a cult fan base of people who just wanted to know what the hell this was and if this was legit. Over the years, the director of the movie, Dean Alioto, would provide information that would prove this movie was fictional, and he would go on to finally release the movie in 2018 on DVD and digital download, and the company American Genre Film Archive would go on and give it a full Blu-ray release in 2020. It may have taken time, but the movie certainly deserves a renewed attention for what it was able to do before Blair Witch did, and will take credit four years later. Is this the best found footage movie ever? No, not really, but it certainly deserves the credit for being the official start in found footage and a game changer in filmmaking as a whole. So in the end, the McPherson tape has a lot to prove for itself in being the first found footage movie, and I think it accomplishes enough to be serviceable. And while it is upsetting that it didn't get to become the official first found footage movie and not get the attention there which would get years later, I think it was able to make up for it in the long run thanks to the cult status it attained from the people finding this movie and thinking it was the real deal. Life is changing the fiction, and the Kirsten tape blends those two worlds together to create an out of this world first in filmmaking.